This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. What you're looking at here is the nearest large galaxy to us. That galaxy is known as the Andromeda Galaxy. It's a whopping two and a half million light years from the Earth. Feel free to look up images on the web of the Andromeda Galaxy and other galaxies. The point is, is that the universe is made up of combinations of stars gravitationally bound together called galaxies. We, of course, live in the Milky Way. If you live away from city lights, and you go outside on a nice dark night, especially without the moon, you can see the band of the Milky Way looking up into the sky. It wasn't until, quite honestly, about 100 years ago in the early 1900s that astronomers began to measure the distance to these fuzzy little objects they saw and recognize that they in fact weren't just little combinations of stars, but they were huge amalgamations of stars, comparable in size to our own Milky Way. So the fact of the matter is, if you wind back about a hundred years, not only were they figuring out what galaxies were, but they were recognizing, as I alluded to in our discussion of the Doppler effect, that in fact each of these small fuzzy patches was equal in size to our own Milky Way and steadily moving away from us, almost without exception. So, galaxies are for the most part moving away from us. What is a galaxy? We live in the Milky Way. The Milky Way galaxy is made up of a whopping 400 billion stars. 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. There are more stars in the Milky Way than there are people on Earth. And most galaxies take on some sort of spiral shape. So when you look up in the sky at the Milky Way, you can see sort of a haze in the sky. That haze you're looking at, which looks sort of like a cloud in a banded form, is the light of billions of stars, all too far away to individually resolve. And each of those stars is in our galaxy. In fact, when you go outside on the darkest of nights, you might see five or 6,000 objects. Every one of those objects is in our galaxy, with the exception of a tiny little patch, if you know what to look at for, in the constellation of Andromeda. And that is the next galaxy over, at least the next large galaxy over. What lies between the galaxies? Nothing much. In fact, when you looked at that image at the beginning, you noticed lots of stars here. You say, oh, look at all the stars between the galaxy. Not so much. Those are stars in our own galaxy that we are looking past to see Andromeda. What's the scale we're talking about? 400 billion stars all jammed into an area about 100,000 light years across. So our galaxy is about 100,000 light years across. We're located about two-thirds of the way out. Right about there. So when you look out at night and see the band of the Milky Way, that's what you're seeing. 400 billion stars all jammed into this area right here, the Milky Way. The next galaxy out is not 100,000 light years away, but 2.5 million light years away. So if this is the Milky Way, about an inch, 25 inches further away is the Andromeda Galaxy. And there's basically nothing in between. A little bit of hydrogen and helium gas, but that's about it. So galaxies are like their own little island universes. Billions of stars, each probably having solar systems of planets. So billions, if not trillions of planets, many of them Earth-like. 100,000 light years across. That's what I mean when I talk about a galaxy. Unless we find some way to beat the speed of light, we're never going to leave this galaxy. Now, that doesn't mean too much, because we've got 400 billion places to visit, 400 billion other solar systems. 
The point is that when we look out at galaxies separated by great distances, we notice that almost all of these galaxies are moving away from us. They are redshifted, leading us to conclude that the universe must be expanding, with us a part of that expansion. So that's the notion of the Big Bang. And based on a number of factors, we can estimate, based on how fast things are moving, how far apart they are, what the distance scale is, we can estimate how long the universe is expanding and when the Big Bang took place. And that current estimation sits at somewhere around 13.75 billion years ago, BYA. So the universe, at least in this iteration, made up of galaxies, is believed to have begun 13.75 billion years ago. Now that even dwarfs the age of our solar system, because keep in mind our solar system is just one star among many in our galaxy, and not all stars were born at the same time. In fact, our solar system is believed to be about 4.6 billion years old. So we're a little late to the game. Our solar system is a good 9 billion years into the age of the universe before it begins to form. So there are stars within the Milky Way that are billions of years older than us, and there are others that are just in the process of forming today. The last point I want to make is, so how many galaxies make up this universe, as we call it? Well, to get a handle on that, I invite you to be sitting down, number one, and to take a look at an image on the web called the Hubble Deep Field. There's a picture of it here, but this picture, even in poster form, doesn't do it justice. The Hubble Deep Field is a spot in the sky that the Hubble looked at for 100 hours straight. 100 hours allowed it to see all the way to the edge of the universe. 100 hours allowed it to photograph over 1,500 galaxies. You can see in this picture here, with the exception of a couple little stars in this image, everything you're looking at is another galaxy. 1,500 galaxies, you're like, oh my gosh, what a huge universe. Each having 400 billion stars, each 100,000 light years across. Millions of light years between galaxies? That's a big universe. Eh, not so much, because those 1,500 galaxies that were pictured in the Hubble deep field represent what was found behind an area of the sky that could fit behind a grain of sand held at arm's length. Take a grain of sand and hold it up in front of you at arm's length. What sat behind that grain of sand is 1,500 galaxies. Based on how many grains of sand there are in the sky, we can estimate how many galaxies there might be in the universe. That's why you've got to be sitting down. We estimate that the universe might have as many, the universe might have as many as, not a thousand, not a million, not a billion, but as many as one trillion galaxies in the universe. So when we talk about the universe, we're talking about one trillion galaxies, each having 400 billion stars, each of those stars having planets, many of those planets looking like Earth. And though we might never travel to these places, we can take the light that has arrived at us and understand a little bit more about what's out there. Again, I'll frame it back to what we discussed in our first video. Are we alone in the universe? My gosh. With a trillion galaxies, with billions of stars, and billions of Earths within our own galaxy? I almost can't imagine it. That gives you a sense for how the universe, how big it is. What we'll talk about in our next discussion is, once the Big Bang happened, what happened next?